Street Neighborhood Association. Excellent. Mike. Hey, Mike. Uh, first, for your consideration, the minutes of the October 23rd meeting. Yeah. Public comments. Oh. Are there any comments? <laughs> Sorry. Apparently one. <laughs> Nice to see some positive action on the solid waste front lately. Okay. A couple of very good operations uh, happened at Smith Road. Maybe we have a turnaround here to what we've been doing. Well, we have um, been getting uh, help from a woman who works also over her hammers. From what I hear, I remember. It would be interesting if somebody could do a follow up on the people who haven't signed up for stickers this year and reply. And we'll talk to you in a couple of moments. Okay, I have no other comments. <coughs> All right, now for your consideration, the October 23rd minutes. Move approval. Okay. Any, any comments? I gave BJ a few. Okay, great. Me too. So I want to accept them as amended. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. <coughs> Next, uh, the minutes of the October 9th meeting. Move approval. Second. Are the four that were here, the four that were at that meeting here? Uh, let's see, MJ was here. We were not. I was. And you were not. I was. You were. Yeah, I was. So. What do you think? Yeah. I have to have four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's <laughs> all right. So all in favor of accepting those minutes as presented? Aye. Aye. Great. Uh, next, Peter O. O'Learline? Zierline. 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 Is here to talk to us about the paint box program. Yes. So uh, I'm here to ask permission for a program that I want to call Art Up <laughs> Northampton, like Hard Up, <laughs> Art Up Northampton. And um, I'm, I'm an illustrator, I'm a local illustrator and a paper cut artist. And my uh, paper cuts are used also for public artworks and I was commissioned in the middle of October uh, to paint these utility paint boxes, three utility paint boxes and two streetlight control boxes in Jamaica Plain in Boston uh, as part of an art-focused urban revitalization project and to beautify the neighborhood and also to deter uh, graffiti on these boxes. And I was very inspired by this project. I sent around to um, Mrs. Newbile the video with it, and there's a couple of pictures and stuff to be seen what my boxes look like. Uh, inspired by this project, I would like to transfer this here to the Pioneer Valley, and I would like to get permission, as uh, Mr. Huntington told me, to paint, not only for me, but to have an artist call for local artists uh, to paint these flood control control structures that you said were available for public art. Before. Well, they've been in the past with the board's approval. Yes. Available. So um, I'm asking permission to the board um, for such a project. So part of the conversation I had with Peter was the fact that our most of our single control boxes for traffic lights have a graffiti-proof coating on them, and I don't think the paint will adhere to it. So that's how the conversation looked at what other medium might he be able to paint on that the, the Board of Public Works has control of. And if you recall last year, the girl from Smith College doing her little um, <clears throat> painting on the flood control wall on West Street. So I offered that as a potential to Peter also. Well, I think it's a fabulous idea, and I think that we support it. Um, I'm going to make a little side comment that some of us think is art, but that aside, moving on, um, I would, I, I have to say that we have so many wonderful, wonderful artists in our community, and I think that if we, if the board were to approve this, that we should open it up to all artists, and I appreciate Absolutely. your idea, but I mean, I appreciate that it's your, your initiative. Yes. But I just think that it would be a disservice to all the great artists in our community not to make it a... Um, but I don't know if that came across, but that is my idea, okay. really to call lo local artists out. I don't want to be the only one. I also have support from Brian Food mm -hmm. uh, from the Boston, uh, Northampton Arts Council. 
um, they, they gave me a grant to show my paper cuts beginning of the year and stuff like this. And he's excited by this idea and I have their support. And uh, Penny Berkey mm -hmm. would also put a call to artists out to uh, recruit local artists to do this. So I don't know if you recall, <clears throat> it was at the last board meeting or the meeting before, but there was an ordinance that was proposed that went around that you voted on and basically that any public art display that lasted more than 90 days on public property would have to go through the Arts Council. I'm not sure if it met two readings in City Council yet, but that's where it was going after you voted yes on that. So what are these structures you have in mind? Well, he looked at the, the traffic control boxes, which it might work, but it might not last that long. That was my concern. So the only other big medium that I thought of was our flood control structures, which we have on Route 5 coming into the city and West Street coming into the city, the two walls there. The ones that hold the logs or yes, the concrete? Yes, the ones that hold the logs. Because those are the only ones that you would actually be able to see as you're driving by or walking past them. And were the traffic control boxes in Jamaica Plain probably the similar paint? That I couldn't tell you. I don't know. I really couldn't tell you either. They were, you know, finished like a lacquer paint or something over it. But for my application anyway, I use spray paint, like cross spray paint that is goes on anything. I, I'm not familiar with this paint that you're saying that deters graffiti, but I had no problem in Boston with it. So I'm just trying to think how to move this forward. So would there be a jury? I mean, if there's well, a competition, how do you select? <laughs> it sounds like in a way we would, um, if we approved it, we would recommend that he would go to the Arts, arts Council. And the Arts Council would figure out how to, uh, I don't want to make it more bureaucratic, but we'd already passed this other recommendation. Yeah, even if the City Council hasn't passed it, the, uh, the where we're heading is that the Arts Council will get involved for a Senate permanent. I mean, I have, at least from what they said, I have their support to that. So. So, so now we need a process, though. What if there are three structures and 12 artists who are interested? Maybe it could be a jury, somehow a jury uh, situation. Or there could be maybe a theme going out, you know, where people have to adhere to it. Similar to an artist called, like, for that bridge or other thing. Gary? Well, along that same line, there's already one small piece that's on the West Street uh, retaining wall that the Smith College student did. It's not very big. No, it's quite small, actually. Very small. And uh, so, I, I don't know, <clears throat> was that was there a time frame on that piece of art? No. That was open-ended? It was open-ended. I mean, she, she was a grad student, and she was painting basically on her way out of the door of the college. So, <laughs> yeah. I think it's, as long as it lasted, it was going to be there. Right. And so that that uh, particular large piece of concrete has got lots of graffiti on it. Mm -hmm. But her piece, I think, is still there. I think it's been respected as far as that goes. I don't think anyone's painted over it. So uh, it's just another wrinkle in how do you incorporate multiple art artists working on the same canvas, so to speak. Mm. Uh, I'm affiliated. I'm a member of the Western Massachusetts Illustrators Guild, where there's a lot of you know very well known illustrators that, that are here in the area. Maybe something like that could be pitched exclusively to uh, professional artists like that to, you know, to make the selection process easier. Mm -hmm. It's just a, it, that one in particular is a very large piece of concrete. The two on Route 5 are much smaller. It would seem to me that if, if the Arts Council is going to play a role in this, that any sort of selection process ought to... It ought to reside with them and that, that the extent that we're involved it would be to identify suitable locations and right. that would be it. Yeah. Give permission to use our property right. for the purpose and, of art. And, and Which then is that? Yeah. Could yeah. you send a note to them asking for their help with this? Sure. Just so that there's a formal request from us for them and then you, you'll follow up with the Arts Council also. This is to Brian Foot, yes? Yep. Yeah. Yes. So we're, we're Essentially, we're asking for their help to kind of organize this. I, I think our board is 
open to it. Yes. Yeah. Not a big deal. But you know, <laughs> we just need some help setting some parameters and selecting. Mm -hmm. Well, Brian expressed his full support to Great. the thing. In so the we're but we're asking him to help uh, identify who will do it. I mean, yeah. you hopefully plus these other three people are. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I mean, for our part, we need to identify an inventory that they can work with. Yeah, that's what I was trying to figure out. What kind of, you know, as Gary put a canvas, could they actually work off of? And mm -hmm. I was thinking of kind of large, and that's why the flood control walls came up right yeah. after that. Would you be willing to let them try the traffic control boxes? I don't have a problem with that. The art that I saw on the internet that uh, you sent me the webpage to looked pretty interesting. Yeah, pretty yeah. cool. I, I would, I would, I would, I mean, I don't think there's any thing wrong with giving it a shot, and I'm, I also think that if we're going to undertake a project like this and try and generate some some public interest, having only two canvases available isn't, isn't going to really work for us. So, and they're both out of town. Yeah, so, that, uh, uh, you know, I mean, if people go into it knowing that it may not last, they, that'll, 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 you know, that'll help them in their decision-making process. But uh, we can always go back and do it again. So in that case, there might be half a dozen places. More than that. Big, the big box by So <clears throat> maybe you could think about identifying where those traffic control boxes are. Yeah, and which it's ones. Probably a good dozen of them across, dozen plus across the city. At the one by the old, at the main and Pleasant. Yeah, and there's the two up there. South by, Street School. There's two up there by South Street School. Uh, one at uh, John and Green Hall. Uh, there's one at Cooper's Corner. So we just identify a few or all of them? or Yeah, all of them. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure they'll, that would help them to know that we've got a dozen spots or eight spots. Or That's good. And I also think that in a business or a residential district that that adds attractiveness and appeal, you know, to the streetscape of Northampton. Okay. So that sounds good? So, no. so we'll, we'll ask for his help and identify yeah. how many canvases we have. So they, that'll help them. Mm -hmm. It's great. The, okay, thank you very much. But uh, do I get in touch with Brian at this point? I would or? encourage you to also. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, it'll be... I'll put Peter in the CC loop of the email to Brian when I send it out tomorrow or Friday. Great. Okay, great. Super. All right. Thanks, Peter. Well, thank you for your time and sure. thank you for having me here. Um, okay, now we get to the good stuff. Change order number two, the contract 85-12 for the engineering analysis for the rehabilitation of the old Shepherd Road Bridge to Stantec in the amount of $3,000. Move approval. Second. So this is also known as Hotel Bridge, which links Water Street leads to Main Street leads. It's the old wrought iron bridge. This is a CPA grant that we received for $35,000 total. Uh, the original contract was $33,758, and there was an additional add-on for $3,500 to do um, ultrasonic testing of the pins and I-bar trusses for analysis in the structural analysis. With the contract, we were shy about $2,100, so I put a Chapter 90 request in for the $3,000, which was approved. I'm trying to change the contract now to incorporate that ultrasonic testing of the, the pins and IFR cords so that we get this study done and, and move it through the CPA process. So once, if the study comes back with a positive recommendation, what do we propose to do to that bridge? Um, the Lead Civic Association would like to try to figure out how to uh, rebuild it to a period of time with like wood planks, things of that nature, and use it for leads events and also a future potential for a spur off the rail trail uh, for a link to Musani Beach in the Sawmill Hills Conservation Areas. Okay. For pedestrian use. For pedestrian, pedestrian bicycle yeah. use only. Yeah, no motor vehicles. Right. That's the end goal that they were looking at. Mm -hmm. Besides some of the tea parties they wanted. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? No. no? All in favor of approving this change order? Aye. 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 Great, next is a contract for propane to Santa Buckley Energy in the amount of 73300 
So this is for the water treatment plant. It's the annual contract for propane, for the uh, heat, and for backup emergency power. Uh, the high bid was, we had three bidders on this. The high bid was 189.9 a gallon. The low bid was uh, 162.91 per gallon from Santa. Last year's bid was $1.49 a gallon. So it did go up from last year. Hmm. Where's Santa Buckley from? They're out of Bridgeport, Connecticut. Wow. I thought this was the George Propane. Well, George Memorial. came in second at 1.849 cents per gallon. So it's uh, quite a difference of 22 plus cents a gallon, a little less than 22 cents a gallon. Now, if someone didn't perform, and like in, I mean, I'm just thinking coming out of Bridgeport, that's wild. Well, maybe that's George's right. propane probably comes out of Bridgeport. Oh, I see. Yeah. It comes in and tankers and yeah. got it. All in favor of approving the contract to buy propane from Santa Buckley. Aye. 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 Next, a one-year extension for potassium for magnet to uh, Marubeni Specialty Chemicals and the uh, no amount given. But they'd like to do it January 3rd. Maybe yeah, it's just, just an extension of an existing contract. This is for odor control at wastewater treatment plant. All in favor of approving this extension? Aye. Aye. Next, a request to, uh, for permission to occupy Pulaski Park to place a menorah in the park from Tuesday, November 26th to December 8th for the public lighting on the 4th of December between the hours of 6 and 8 p.m. Uh, for the annual manure in the park by Shaban Lubavitch. Second. Um, everything in the permit is in order. Um, uh, money's been paid, the check's been paid. Um, it's a matter of you just approving it. Great. This has so, been an annual event for at least five or six or seven years now. Mike? That answers my question. Okay. <coughs> All in favor of approving this request? Aye. 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 Next, change order number one to contract 258-13 and North East, North East Survey Consultants for land surveying services in the amount of nothing. It's only a contract extension. That's Move correct. Second. It's a time extension. This is the, um, uh, the survey we're using for uh, the services for private ways. So it's just a time extension at this point. In favor of extending this contract? Aye. 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 Great. Uh, change order number one to contract 29 13 for water meters and electronic transmitters to EJ Prescott for the amount of $40,000. Second. This is a allowable 25% increase in the existing contract. Um, uh, David Sparshall, water superintendent, wants to get more of these in and has the time and the opportunity to do this year. So he asked for a 25% increase in his contract so he gets more of these. Um, Auto reads done. So we're, have we reached the point where we are replacing <coughs> earlier installed transmitters? Uh, the electric transmitters, no. They're, they're going to the radio read, which are drive bys or right. new transmitters versus the old handles you have to walk up and actually hit. So, so, but we're still building out the radio read. Yes, we are. We're still building it out. Yeah. Any other questions? All in favor of approving this change order? Aye. Aye. Great. Change order number one to contract 89-14 for electrical testing for the emergency generator and main switch gear at the wastewater treatment plant to amp electrical in the amount of $3,500. Approval. Second. So there were three things on this change order. Um, first one was a $943.15 increase for... Um, Moving the location of the temporary generator that was installed for the temporary operation of the plant during the planned shutdowns and reconnecting it to serve the whole plant temporarily in place of the existing plant standby generator. So it was additional work incurred by the contractor on site that was not expected. The second item was for $1,340.68 and that was looking in existing manholes and inspecting and documenting the condition of the feeder conductors at the wastewater treatment plant. They were uh, sensing low voltage runs 
and some of the lines from the generator and the switchgear to the motor control centers, the various parts of the plant. So this was an inspection that they were looking to see if they could visually see something right off the bat. The last thing of this change order was uh, for $1,274.21, which was for the replacement of a flux shifter in the main normal power breaker switchgear. There's this not work is quiz on this, is there? No, there's not. <laughs> I hate it when the flux shifter goes bad. <laughs> I know. I just... It's much worse when the flux capacitor. <laughs> so as part of this contract, this is part of the... Um, Work that was done under the assent, uh, the consent order from the state. Uh, the report is due at the state on Friday, which we sent our draft comments back to Kleinfelder today. So AMP's work is done at this point. Um, so this is wrapping up his part of the contract. So would they see arcing with the visual inspection? They had arc suits on, but um, they noticed that there was some um, uh, overheating. At one of the breakers they saw, there were a number of different things the report had in it. I was just thinking what a visual inspection would show you. I wasn't there for the inspection, but we wouldn't be allowed in the room anyways, because they had their hard flash suits on. Okay. All in favor of this change order to the electrical contract? Aye. Aye. One-year extension of contract 121-12 for groundwater monitoring of Brown and Caldwell in the amount of 41100 Just an extension. Just an extension? Yeah. This is for landfill related work? Landfill groundwater monitoring? Yes. But we paid this money again, right? I mean, they were extending the contract, but they're going to repeat the work for $41,000. That's the value of it. <laughs> with the CPI. Right. Okay. So we're just ex right. we're extending it. A, so it's forty one thousand a year. Right. Yes. And we're right. extending it for another year. Right. That is correct. Yes. Two events per year. Uh, any other questions? All in favor of extending this contract? Aye. 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 Great. Change order. <coughs> Change order number one to contract 144-13, the data foundry for computer network support services in the amount of $10,000, and a time extension to June 1st next year. So we are still working on the transition from the data foundry to have MIS, our, our city um, information system, take over network support service here at the DPW. It's not quite complete yet, and George's contract ends at the end of December. He has about 15 hours left on it. Uh, George Danzinger is the data foundry. So we've asked that he stay on board until June 1st, 2014, and added a marginal amount of $10,000 to the uh, contract to ensure that we have a smooth transition. Questions about that? Is that built on an hourly basis? Or yes. Does he have other clients besides us? I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> I'm just curious. <laughs> I think he's just yeah, retired. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's yeah. what I was just curious. He's had some health issues. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so all in favor of uh, extending George's contract? Aye. 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 Uh, number 11. Nothing on my mind. Is yeah. I have a couple things. Um, our next meeting is a half holiday for the city. I'm not sure if you want to rearrange that meeting. The a day or two in advance or a week earlier or a week after. We run into the same problem on Christmas Day with our second meeting scheduled in December. So I want to bring those to the board attention that we may want to look at alternate days and do we want to set them tonight or wait until um, at least the Christmas one until our first meeting in December. So our next meeting is the day before Thanksgiving. Yeah. I'm sure we all want to be here. Mm -hmm. So you're taking that morning off. It's the afternoon the city has up. It's half day for the city. <coughs> <laughs> Do you anticipate that we would need to have a meeting? We always have to sit, have things come up, it seems like. <laughs> well, be next week. We'd have to make a decision before next. We'd have to have it towards the end of next week or early the following week. Or could we just, I don't know, 
I, I was wondering how this sort of played with the uh, stormwater decisions that that discussion need, that needed to move along. Well, the um, and whether or not the city councilors are scheduled to have scheduled ward meetings for mm -hmm. stormwater. They start on uh, Monday, December 2nd, then December 3rd, then there's one on the 12th and the 17th. Mm -hmm. um, they have kind of slowed the whole process down. This is clearly going to go into next year. Um, next fiscal year or next, next calendar, calendar year? year. Um, are you thinking we have one meeting in December and one meeting in November? But we'd be on call for, I mean, don't we have to well, sign change of the contract? How about, how about the 4th and the 18th in December? Skip the November one and do it for the 18th. It's okay with me. Yeah, okay with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Excellent problem solving. Right? Well, no, not yet. Well, those ward meetings, are you guys going to those? Uh, There's not one the second, the third? <laughs> but there's not one on the fourth. Not one on the no. fourth. No. Are going to do three meetings in a row? Three months? Maybe Terry is. We live for this. The rest of us are okay. Yeah, you guys have that. Well, You've got the boats. Come on, what are you worried about? There's never any stormwater or flooding in the I'm on the side of the hill. I mean, we might want to put up so that there's some sort of um, board of public works representation at each of the wards. I think that's great. I was going to say, I would probably go to, to the one in my ward. And if we of course, some of us live in the same wards, but but really? the idea, the i the idea of dividing it up, I think that's a great idea. I'll go to the twelfth. I'll go to the seventeenth. I'll, I'll go to the second. I'll be the third. Okay, so wait, oh, wait. Have we agreed to do this? That's the end of the Okay, so hmm? you said the third. Yep. And what'd you say, uh, Dave? David? You said something else. I, I said I'd go the 17th. I said the 12th. I said I'll do yeah. Ward, Ward 5. Okay. Mike, next Mike. to the 12th. And, and MJ for the 17th, and I went to the 4th. Yeah, I the 2nd, I mean. I think I'm going to go to the 17th. Well, I, I, yes, um, I think that if we got a commitment from at least one member for each of them and then encourage people as they feel is appropriate to attend other ones, that that will be. Well, I think I'll be at 2, 3, and 17. Okay. As will Jim and Doug, I think. Which one was 12? I'll be in Denver. No, no, our daughter's graduating, uh, getting her master's. Okay, so... But, but she has asked me whether I'd like to go over the weekend. Because the go. areas are all open. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, we all have volunteered for one, so... Yeah. Yes. Oh, but that's an answer to MJ saying we have any stormwater duties that were... Yes, yeah, so and that was just... So, I think we've agreed. So rearrange the meetings? Yes, the meetings are going to be on the 4th and the 18th. So those are the DPW meetings, regular meetings, 4th yep. and 18th. Okay. Yep. And so none on the 27th and then on the 4th. On, on December 4th. Right. Yes, December 4th and December 18th. Mm -hmm. The other thing I have is we received a petition from the City Council for Bottoms Road. So with that, and according to the ordinance, we need to hold a public hearing. Right. So I'm not sure what date the board would like to hold that hearing. We'll need to do notice to the voters with certified mail. So we're looking at a probably a two-week period before we could set something up with Advertising in the newspaper all the time. And it's probably too dark to do it before a meeting. I was just going to facetiously say I think we can do it for that. I mean, we've been there, right? That's true, yeah. Keep a few car lights on. Because <laughs> then we could do it before the meeting on the 4th. Right. Because right. probably there won't be snow on the ground by then. 
but I think Mike's point is well taken. We've been there before. We've been there. We've been there twice. Have we been there twice? On this road, I think only once. Only once. 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 Yeah. They were like one of the first ones we did. Yeah, they I know they were. I think they were the first one. It was a beautiful day. Well, how'd you feel about what going on the uh, uh, like four forty-five mm -hmm. on, on the fourth? Can we go at 444 on the 4th? Sure. I like that. <laughs> I like that. 444 on the 4th. <laughs> hey, whoever's the 4th one there wins. <laughs> we'll all be standing at the end of the road. Is that okay, Ned? That gives you enough time to get the letter out? 445 p.m.? 4. 444 on the 4th. You know what you Thank you. Yes. <laughs> we will set it up. Thank you. Gosh, we're going to need to have a calendar set up for the... Lots of reminders. Yeah, really. Okay, so on the 4th... Whoa, that's going to be long. Is that Bottoms Road or Bottoms? It's Bottoms Road. Bottoms. It's also known as Batons, so there's oh, one yeah, with a U, one with an O. Mm -hmm. The second letter is always an O. Okay. No, the second letter, the second O is it's either an O or U. Really? It's B-O-T. No, you, you, you're, you're, you're talking across each other. You're saying the second letter, and he's saying the second O. Oh. Second vowel. So, oh. the first letter okay. being a B... It's oh, the motion that we move on. And it's always yeah. a no. Yeah, second. Okay. You were both right. Okay. Uh, okay, good. So, that. Anything else, Ned? That was it. Oh, that's all I had. Jim? Okay. Uh, and just. Well, it kind of goes into stormwater, which is next. Um, Jim and Ned have been working on a, uh, the brochure. Um, and now that we have the information back from the city councilors about when these dates are, um, that has gone to the printer. So the idea is we'll print it, mail it, and it should be in people's houses by Thanksgiving or earlier. In Ed Lou, I don't think they talked about it last night. It was the only point of discussion last night in the Ed Lou meeting. It was the only uh -huh. thing on the agenda. They didn't hear anything about it, though. I did call Paul, and he said there was no need for anyone from Public Works to attend. Okay. So I'm not sure what was discussed. All right. Do we have anything else about stormwater? Do we need a conference committee meeting this month? It was uh, postponed. Or Skip. Well, because of the holiday. But I didn't know if we would talk about scheduling one. You're the chair. I know. We look to you. Right? I say no, because we were okay. waiting for these meetings to happen. Yeah. And then we'll have a meeting the 9th of December for the conference committee, because it's the second Monday. Okay. Jim? The last meeting I was at a conference in Providence. And there was a representative from EPA there talking about the pending MS4 permit, which uh, she had indicated should be out in draft form by the end of November. She said it had been delayed by the government shutdown by about a month or so, but that a new draft would be forthcoming this month. So I thought that was interesting. So we should have something. Any, any, in, any in, so that will be our second draft. It will be. And does that mean that the final product would be shortly thereafter? Mm -hmm. Uh, next year, probably, probably, I don't know, first by the sec first or second quarter next year. Okay. Yeah. And did she have anything to say about what we might expect? Um, she said there would be some similarities to the one, uh, the draft that came out in New Hampshire, um, a little while ago. Okay. So. Which we thought, which I understand was fairly stringent. It was stringent, a little bit different than... Uh, than the first draft, but we'll wait and see. Take a look at it when it comes out. But okay. it is coming. I thought that was interesting to know. All right. 
Uh, so that's it on stormwater and flood control, I think. Glendale Road, hours for yard waste. Um, we continue to hear from people about the frustrations of dealing with uh, the alternate weekend yard waste thing. Um, I mentioned to Mary Ann uh, Labarge that uh, I asked her, how would you feel about having it was open every week but closed at one the way it traditionally has operated. She thought that'd be fine. I wonder how you feel about that. I'm fine with that. Um, I, I, what I've heard, and Jim and I talking today with Dave Valletta, who is a landfill manager out there, um, chain, you know, overseeing operations, is that we're looking at maybe doing something that might open it um, one, one morning a week also, or a day during the week, like Wednesday or Thursday or something. Just provide some additional time out there too. It's not something we need to sit down and discuss and see what operational cost is going to be and come back through with the board with the proposal. So I don't think there's anything pressing at this moment with leaf season being over, but it's something that we need to have ready and in place for next spring. <clears throat> is there any advantage to dragging it out so long? I mean, if we think we have a good idea and if it's going to work. Why wouldn't we execute the plan? We could execute the plan, but it doesn't mean that we would be... If we're doing this for leaf and yard waste composting, I don't see us doing it in January or February or March, but starting off in April. We could set the plan in motion prior, but there'd be really no dates in advance of that, unless we wanted to open up the landfill for regular use, not the landfill the transfer station for regular use during a weekday. So last and winter was... At some point, you could not bring yard waste to the landfill. You could. Did we stop them in November or December? This is the last weekend for it. Isn't it? I believe it is. It is. This is the last weekend they have it open for that. The 16th. Mm -hmm. So then, if you had something in the following week, leaves all over my yard. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> huh. In a couple days. Good snowstorm will change that. Yeah. yeah. But I have commitments on or Saturday. Or good wind. Well, how does everyone feel about that? I mean, did, 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 did everyone know that? Yeah. yeah. I, I haven't been out there that many times. I've always been there. One of these Saturdays, but I've been surprised if there was no backup of traffic whatsoever. It ran very smoothly, no waiting. It's always clockwork. Mm -hmm. I was amazed. I, I thought it would, you know, on the big weekdays, it would just be a traffic jam, but it wasn't. Mm -hmm. So, Jim and I were talking earlier today about the fact that, um, you know, perhaps that. During a weekday event, we might be able to get away with a 40-yard box within the transfer station, not even open up the leaf and yard waste area for regular residential use. The volume might be that small. And Saturdays has been the big push right now with leaf season. And of course, anytime we do it, additional hours outside of what we do now, there's additional costs. And if you recall the last meeting we had, we talked about the solid waste enterprise fund and kind of the status quo where we were after the first quarter of this year which is okay, no, it's marginal. Yes. But if it's early. It's, it's early. early. Well, so that's what I was going to bring up, was the fact that we discussed the budget, it was early, and I was like, what, if we op open it for those additional times, is do we, know, do we think we can cover it because um, we have fewer permit holders, we have, um, it, it looks like the revenues might be down, <laughs> So, did you feel fiscally comfortable making this decision for next spring? I think we'll have a better idea where we are at the end of the, after the end of the second quarter. Okay. Right now, we're just one quarter behind. It's kind of premature. There was that. There was. We got the handout. Mm -hmm. I don't think you heard that. We got the handout, but there wasn't. It was, wasn't on target. <coughs> it's not on target at this point. At this point, but it's early. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand. 
good service to our community. I like the idea that it wouldn't add that much expense if we if we were able to do it at, at local street. Right. Not local street at the Glendale Road facility. Oh. oh. I thought you were talking about I thought you said Locust Street. Putting a box out here at Locust Street. Yeah. Putting a box, I was talking about Glendale Road. Oh, all right. We always had a residential drop out there for Leaping Yard Waste out front in the transfer station, so people didn't have to go over the hillside into the composting area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. So we wrestled with the budget and the fee schedule and the, the cost per bag. We had a pretty tight budget altogether. And and it seems to me that if, if our revenues are down, then it's not realistic to expect that things are going to work out nicely and we can afford more costs. Um, so I'd rather wait until we get the results of the second quarter in and we have a better idea of where we are before we start adding hours. You know, I agree that, that there's a need to do that, but I don't know that we'll have the money to do it. I'd like to wait. Also, it sounds like we're getting some community feedback that maybe morning, uh, every every yeah. Saturday morning might be preferred to alternate to yeah. every during the season. During the season. Yeah. yeah. And your staffing problems were exacerbated by the late afternoon closing. You've never had trouble getting people who work OT through one. Right. The morning hours are not an issue. It's yeah. the afternoon where right. people like to do other things on their weekends. Yeah. So and did you say OT, like overtime? Yes. Do you pay the staff, the gatekeepers, overtime? The, the, mm -hmm. the SMEOs, the special motor equipment operators, are paid overtime on okay. Saturdays to operate equipment at the landfill. Okay. But that's not the regular No, the gatekeepers are all hourly, unbenefited. They're um, less than 20 hours a week. Okay. So there's no overtime involved. So we'll revisit this before we start accepting that. So what, what if you did have some sticks or something or whatever that you picked up in your yard a month from now? You'd All the fire department the have a little burn pit? Yeah, burn You'd it. be yeah. in the third standard deviation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, all right, fair, fine, fine, fine. Or <coughs> save them for springtime. We live next to the meadows, and it just goes over there. Oh. On private property, on private property. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, yeah, no, we never do. Um, okay. Uh, private ways was that Bottoms Road? Or? Bottoms Road, and um, you know we're working through the process of the survey work. We're still trying to get all the field work done before uh, snow flies, and um, the winter time will be for lots of paperwork. Has have how many have come back from the city solicitor and gone to the city council at this point? Um, complete. Complete. Done. None. Uh -huh. We have a number of at least four or five survey plans that have been reviewed by the city solicitor as far as the abutters to it to make sure that they're correct. The plans have been uh, uh, checked and re changed <coughs> to reflect those changes that he made as part of the title examine. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of in limbo as to whether or not are we doing a taking, are we doing an order taking, are we doing an easement. I haven't had that decision from Alan how this is going to work out as far as the city council and when this goes to them. I think we have four or five streets completed and ready to go at this point. Hmm. But some of them have a right of way. I mean, there's already a, a street right of way layout. There's a layout. There is right of ways on their deeds, and it describes that right of way on some of these streets. Like Branton Court, there was five feet on everyone's deed, so there's a total of ten feet wider right away. Yeah, but there were some that were thirty feet wide, as I recall. <clears throat> like some were like Hillcrest, where it's Hillcrest was sixty feet, I think. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. easy. Yeah. But even more? Hillcrest isn't done. Hillcrest is done. Yeah, Grove Avenue is done by the court system. The very end of it, the last I think two or three hundred feet, was a court order. And the other street that was done was, um, I'm trying to remember the ones they had in green color. Request. Um, there's one other street that, oh, it was End of Graves Avenue, a portion of. So those three have been through the process, two by city council. Maybe I'll call Alan. I mean, in a way, it's between him and the mayor at this point. But. Um, 
done. No, I think you have to go around the table. Okay. And see if we have any, is anything that you'd like to talk about that we haven't discussed? No. No. Chris. Nope. Mike. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think. Oh. When Roe ran the meeting, it was. <laughs> Uh, I guess I don't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's something really quick. <laughs> I think you're clear. You're clear by that clock. Yeah, right. I'm clear. Okay, good. We have uh, two new engineers working for us now. Okay. Diane Rossini is working with water and wastewater uh, type work um, with Jim. And we've hired our new transportation engineer, uh, Alex Bublik, uh, from uh, Turner's Falls. He started um, a week and a half ago, taking Laura Hansen's place. It is great. And you're happy about this. I am. When we hit it, so one quick story. Do we have time? Yeah. Oh, we have time. We all the time. Yeah. 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 When we interviewed Alex for the transportation engineering position, when I asked him how he decided to get into transportation engineering as sort of a subset of civil engineering, he looked up and he said, I love transportation engineering. I'm like, Phew. <laughs> Clearly, there's a guy with the right attitude. Right. Um, I had two things besides that little story. Um, Pulaski Park CPA grant process is moving forward. I wanted to thank David and Ro and Terry for coming um, to the CPA meeting in support of that. Um, on the 20th, uh, next week, Wednesday, I think they're going to be making their decisions about what projects to fund. So I'll be attending that meeting in case there are any last minute questions about, um, about the project. But I think it went very well. Um, Terry provided a lot of good input and things on uh, the application. So, And the second thing is um, we held a forest walk up around the Ryan Reservoir last Saturday from 10 till noon with uh, Nicole and Mike Morey. Um, Nicole had advertised that sort of far and wide in newspapers and, and, uh, and things. And we had about, I'd say about 20 people turned out um, to talk about our forest stewardship plan and the things that we're doing to protect the forest and the watershed. Uh, we were really happy with the turnout. Uh, a lot of interesting questions, people interested in what we're doing. We talked specifically about some of the, uh, the cutting plans that we're, we're going to be doing this winter. People will see some activity from, from the road. So some of the abutters came and we were able to have conversations with them about it. It, was, it went very well. We were very pleased with, uh, with Mike and Nicole on that, on that walk. So um, we'll be planning future walks in the future after this first round of cutting is done and other points. Uh, but anyway, it went, it went well. MJ. Oh, we're looking at BJ. All set. All set. All set. Yeah. Um, what's the scoop at the stop sign at uh, Jackson Street? Staying or going? Staying? It's staying. City Council went through two readings last Thursday night on it. We are working on a temporary solution for winter. Obviously, the stop sign in the center of the road can't stay there because of plowing operations. Mm -hmm. And um, Alex will be working with uh, Alex Public, our new engineer, will be working with Dave Lutter, our senior engineer, on a permanent solution to that, which may include um, moving curving in, things of that nature, to narrow the intersection and give it a more permanency until we um, have a project moving forward through the tip for a mini roundabout or traffic signals there. I'm going to say, I've said this a couple times, but I think that people don't know how to behave in a four-way stop. And I think it would behoove us to do a little public relations on, even if it's just the, the community norms, for us to do a little speak. Because the other morning when I went to drive through the intersection and it was blocked off because of that crazy car accident there that had nothing to do with the stop sign, but had to do with somebody sounded like drinking and driving. Um, you can just see the hesitation every time I'm at that intersection, that people don't know what the protocol should be. And people keep on asking me, <laughs> because I'm in the Board of Public Works, that I'm not even sure. It's all about courtesy. I know, but... First but in, first out, right? I mean, it's yeah. like the, the laws of driving. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just got to keep track. Courtesy. So there's no rotation, it's just... Yeah. I, think, I, I think it would be... I think it, <coughs> we might want to do a little... Public statement of that, though, mm -hmm. because I think that there's enough question and enough hesitation. It certainly took a while for the one on Florence Road and Bird Spit to settle down, and I think that one works real well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, 
I'll see if I can find a YouTube video on that. that we can oh, watch. that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> like the double diamond cross back intersection that you showed me that time. <laughs> and you're all set, Rosa? I'm set. Um, I'm going to be on the Bill Newman show tomorrow, I just realized. Oh. It seemed like a long way away. Can we call in and ask questions? Yeah, sure. <laughs> it seemed like a, a like like next month when they made the plan. You didn't. <laughs> you know he doesn't have a very good swag bag. Bill Dwight had used to get a mug, he get a cake, you know, get all all sorts of stuff. Newman's got nothing. Um, but I guess we'll talk about storm again. <laughs> what time, Chair? Uh, nine o'clock. WHMP. I had forgotten about it. It just came to me as we were. Yeah. Yeah. It's looking like holy cow. I have I tomorrow, have a brief for your radio on the line. Let's just cut base for radio. Are those live broadcasts on the internet? Uh, you can get the stream. No, you can't. They don't stream. No. That's all I got. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Awesome. Oh, Sherry, which is the night that I am. The record is in time.